All right, so let's look at condensation of acids with amines. So here you can see we have a carboxylic acid right, reacting with thionyl chloride to give us an acid chloride that then can react to form an amide. All right, so um, if you look at this reaction down below, this is an important commercial reaction. So we don't really do it in lab that much, but here we have a carboxylic acid, right? Reacting with NH2. So really when you look at that reaction, think about what's gonna happen without going into mechanisms, we're, we're gonna deprotonate that with an acid-base reaction, right? So it's not perfectly clear right here, but here you have an RCOO minus and then you have an RNH3 um, plus here, All right? So you gained a, a proton on that nitrogen. And then high temperature here can make this react further to become your amide, okay? Now, we've seen some reactions on this page before, almost all of them, with the exception of maybe this last one. So we can do reduction of carboxylic acids. So let's take a look at these. So first we can use LAH, H2O, in all these situations here that we see with a, a carboxylic acid, right? Taking us to an alcohol, aldehyde and ketone, taking us to the corresponding alcohols also, right? Um, NABH4 works also. Now remember that that works for aldehydes and ketones, right? So only under these circumstances can we see a reduction. LH, if you recall, is more reactive. And the other thing we can do here too is we can, um, we can replace this with a chloro group to make an acid chloride. And then we can use this weaker form of LAH, right? It's the lithium aluminum tritibutoxyhydride. Um, and that makes this reaction stop at the aldehyde. It stops at the aldehyde. And the other one that kind of pops up in this chapter, and you just you see it kind of pop up in a couple questions as you go through this chapter, is the use, use of uh, BH3 THF. So um, this molecule, just to point out and re remind you of it, here we have a ketone, right? Here we have a carboxylic acid. So it just tends to react with the carboxylic acids fastest. So if we put in here um, one EQ of BH3THF, then you end up selectively only reducing the carboxylic acid in. So in, in essence, what here is we're left with this. So it leaves our ketone Folks, the group there, but it takes our carboxylic acid to an alcohol. Well, let's look at alkylation of carboxylic acids to form ketones. So what we're gonna see here is a general method to form ketones um, by reacting carboxylic acids with two equivalents of an organolithium reagent. So it turns out that Grignard's are not reactive enough. to react with COOHs other than just doing an acid-base reaction. And so the, the general mechanism here looks like this. Now we need two, we need two equivalents of these organolithium reagents. And then we follow that up with a little bit of water in there as our second step. So let's look at the mechanism here. And I like these mechanisms. They, they make a lot of sense when you look at what's happening. So let's take, um, how about this? How about benzoic acid? Let's take benzoic acid here, and now we're gonna add to this here an RLI. Now remember, we have two of these things here. So with these two molecules, the very first thing that's gonna happen, remember, that's reacting like an R minus and an Li plus. 
So you've got this proton here and the presence of this really strong base. So just right off the bat, you're going to just grab that H. And what you're going to make here is benzoate. So we're going to get this. All right? And then I will write here plus resonance. So you get resonance. Okay, now the organolithium reagent is reactive enough to come over and react at this carbon, even though the molecule has a negative charge. So we're going to swing around here and we're going to grab that carbon and do this. All right, now what that will give us is our, our carbon atom that's right there. That's your green carbon, right, with your O minus and another O minus here and uh, our R group down here. So you form a di and ion here. Now this this is stabilized by the fact that we have lithium ions hanging around there. So that can help um, it can help accommodate that negative charge a little bit. Right? So get that connection. So um, we're going to continue on here, and when we continue on, we're going to go ahead and add um, H2O, our H3O plus. And so in our reaction up above here, we have H2O. Other thing that we're going to see here sometimes is H3O plus can be used. So as we look at this next step here, we're going to go through and we're going to grab two protons. So we're going to abbreviate this out like this. Okay. So that's just doing an acid workup on that. So you get your pH, you get your R group, and now you have two OHs here. Right? Now we're in the presence of H3O plus, so this is going to continue. So as we continue this reaction, we'll, we'll swing down this direction. You have your H plus H2O. So we're going to come around, we're going to grab H atom here. Now that's going to give us our R group and OH and an OH2 plus. Now that that's a good leaving group, right? So again, there's our water is a good leaving group. If you go on and take biochem, you're going to see this step happening so frequently. In fact, in the next two chapters, it just happens over and over again. So we're going to kick off our water. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to combine a couple steps. So I'm going to swing around and I'm going to do this and then I'm going to kick off water there. So you kick off your water. So here's your H2O and then we're ending up with our OH like this and our R group down here below. And that also has resonance. And here we're just one step away right from our last Step so we take water here and we're going to grab that proton and then that'll give us our final product, which is this. So, again, note here that this stops at our ketone. All right, so, that's our first case. In the second case, we can use um, a lithium dialkyl cuprate. So, it's just a different approach, but Notice that our product here is a ketone. So if we look down below, we, we see a different route that ends up with the same product. So here we have a carboxylic acid, a thionyl chloride. That makes your acid chloride here. All right, now we make the lithium dialkyl cuprate, which then reacts with this to form a tetrahedral intermediate and then gives us a ketone down here at the end. So reaction stops there. So notice those two products that we saw in case number one and case number two, those, those are the same, right? The same products, two different routes of, of accomplishing that transformation. Now there's just a couple other reactions to wrap up here before we uh, finish up chapter 20. So how do we make acid chlorides? Well, we've already seen this. We saw this mechanism back in chapter 18, right? So this is just your observed reaction here, right? Carboxylic acid, right? Plus SO, Cl2. The only thing they introduced this compound in here um, in chapter 21. 
and chapter 20 a little bit. So I tend to just like to use this guy here as far as the reaction is concerned. Uh, but that makes your acid chloride. Um, and again, look back at chapter 18 if you need to review that mechanism a little bit. The other is reaction with alcohols. Um, now, I, I like to hold on and cover the mechanisms for this in chapter 21 because these are interconversions of carboxylic acid derivatives. But here we have an acid chloride and an alcohol to make an ester. And so you have your acid chloride here, you have your alcohol, and you have made an ester. All right, and same thing down below. This is the overall transformation of that, that, that process here where we're starting off with a carboxylic acid. The other thing that we can do is we can carry out reactions with ammonia. So again, this is a chapter 21 mechanism, but here you have an acid chloride, right? Uh, reacting with an amine to form an amide down here below. 